So how many of these, the world's most eaten food, have you had so far today? Oh, and the reason why I'm asking is it's interesting. Most people don't even recognize them. And yet, you're probably going to eat some today if you haven't already. Well, of course, when you ate them, they didn't look anything like this. I mean, these small little hard-shelled seeds growing on a small blade of grass. Well, and here's the whole plant, Teosinte. And what's inspiring about this to me is how did this sparse spindly grass with little hard-shelled seeds become the world's most eaten food? You know, especially back in the days before big ag corporations. See, about 9,000 years ago in Mexico, people started working on selecting these, be these plants for larger seeds and for thinner shells and better eating quality. And that's where something really interesting happened. They began to trade it, and it made its way down through this international trade and exchange to the all the way to the western, west, southwestern Amazon, where it spent a few thousand years being cultivated. And from there, it made it to the eastern Amazon, where farmers worked on it for a few thousand more years, and it would go back up to Mexico and back on down south, and then back up to North America. Until finally we started to get something that looks like modern corn. And we found these three small ears of modern corn in Ecuador from about 2,000 years ago. And this is what I love about this story. The development of corn was this broad international project uh, with people just working on it a little bit in their lifetime and exchanging seeds and trading. And they'd come up with something good and they'd send it out there into the world and exchange with each other. This is the most remarkable plant breeding transformation I'm aware of. And it wasn't done by big corporations or for greed or for the profit motive. It was done as a broad intercontinental act of love in which everyone just contributed their little bit that they could in their lifetime in this culture of openness and exchange. This wasn't accomplished by a culture of capitalist scarcity in the profit motive. This was accomplished by a culture of openness and gift-giving. And I think that's pretty cool.